Hey, Vesna, I'm very happy that you're here. And uh, so uh, this is Vesna. And uh, we, uh, I think uh, I first met you in uh, 2012 when we started with the uh, RIPE Atlas measurements. Uh, you're a community builder at uh, RIPE NCC. And uh, yeah, so we seem to have a lot of uh, hobbies in common. Yeah. I like to work together with people on uh, technical things, and so do you. Uh, we've met each other at the uh, hackathons as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, but uh, so how have you been doing during the uh, pandemic? Uh, that's uh, the question. You know, I know it wasn't always easy for me, at least. And uh, so uh, uh, I saw a series of uh, blog posts on uh, Rijp Lab uh, from you. Uh, talking about that and comparing it in a sort of nerdish way. And uh, I think it's really nice to have that talk uh, here. So Thank you. Please, everybody, welcome <laughs> Vesna. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's uh, wonderful to be here and uh, to risk my life for uh, the science. And thank you for risking your lives, too, for being here in person. I missed it. And uh, um, I've been struggling too, and, and so my way to, to deal with that is to indeed write, present, and actually involve people in these topics. And so the official title is uh, Resilience of the Technical Communities During the Pandemic. But what I basically want to talk about are like fluffy topics like well-being and mental health. And that's not something that the technical communities usually talk about. So I thought, how, how do I even approach this? So I um, thought, where else do we have this uh, abstraction <laughs> models and layers? Well, it's a, uh, it's a protocol stack, TCP IP network, wh whatever you want to call it. And then that actually maps pretty neatly to the Maslow pyramid of needs. Uh, Maslow was a social scientist, anthropologist, and so he came up with this way of, of putting um, things in layers and, and um, stacks. So then I thought, okay, that may be a good approach. But of course, I'm not really qualified to talk about the mental health. I'm, I'm not a mental health professional. What am I? <laughs> well, I'm an engineer. I studied the computer science a long time ago in, in a country that doesn't exist anymore. And then I've been working for IPNCC in many roles, like a trainer, community builder, hackathon organizer. I'm part of the RIPE community. Uh, mostly I've been busy with um, Southeastern Europe region. Um, I'm part of the Code of Conduct Task Force and also Trusted Contact. So I am trained a little bit in this, like how to help people. Um, and I'm also a hacker, so I've been uh, going to these events, like what was described uh, in the previous talk, um, since 97. And then, on a personal note, I've been also like suffering with a lot of conditions, let's say, that are kind of also prevalent in our community, and I tried a lot of things to, to deal with it, to to kind of do the self-help and the other kind of help. And uh, what they have in common is uh, acronyms. So we'll go through these later. So um, as Willem said, uh, I started writing about it with the main message of uh, you are not alone. We are struggling with this together and we can help each other. And then I thought, um, well, okay, I, I'm done. Um, I write an article and then I thought, poof, there is too much material. So I wrote 10 articles, and I thought it's going to take me 10 weeks, like, okay, every week, one article. No, it took me three months, no, six months, to actually get to the last one. So there is 10 articles, if you count from, from zero, and then to the layer nine. Um, and, and so I'll go through each one of them uh, in a minute. But first of all, the RIPE community has been um, dealing with this, it's not just me. So there was a, a small group of people that was also publishing a lot with this tag COVID-19 on our blog. We then got together several times and uh, um, 
kind of questioned ourselves, like, but what do we know? Like, how do we know what people actually need? So then we made a survey and then presented the results of that survey at the previous RIPE meeting. Uh, the video and slides are available there. It's also somebody from, from Dutch community, Eric Bais, probably uh, a lot of you actually know him, who was uh, very much involved in that. And then we are going to continue at the next RIPE meeting. So this is also my opportunity to invite you all to take part in the RIPE 83. Um, RIPE, if you don't know, stands for Rizo IP European. So it's a cool French-English mix of acronyms. And um, again, this time it's going to be a virtual meeting, unfortunately. So um, on one hand, unfortunately, but on the other hand, it's much easier to, to do to take part end of November. You can um, yeah, register, it's open. Anybody can register. You don't have to be a member of RIPE NCC or any kind of member is completely open. And this time it's also for free because it's virtual. So if you are more interested, you can take part in some of our mailing lists like diversity mailing lists, write your own blog post on our blog and uh, we also kind of have a lot of interest in common with intersecting communities. I won't explain those acronyms. So, layer one, physical layer in the protocol stack, but um, also with Maslow, it's like physiological needs, physical needs, physical health. That was a huge topic with COVID, like people were getting ill, dying, their family and friends were in physical danger. We were in lockdown, it was horrible. Um, but even if we managed to kind of stay healthy, there is another part of that which is even a bigger taboo and that's the mental health. And so um, one of the geek icons, uh, <laughs> Carrie Fisher, uh, she was very vocal proponent of destroying that stigma of mental illness. So she's been very publicly speaking about how did she struggle, how did she survive uh, those struggles. And so I included her as a, as a role model in describing this uh, kind of physical needs that we all have. And another example is from the INEX community, which is Irish um, internet exchange community, they had their own meeting and they invited uh, a psychologist to actually talk to them Yeah, from more professional uh, point of view. And you can find that video online. Then the layer two is kind of a data link layer, but it's also connected with like security and safety. And so um, a uh, role model here is uh, Hedy Lamar, who uh, was working on some kind of military um, uh, Wi-Fi, early Wi-Fi technology a long, long time ago. And of course, she was an actress and more famous probably for that. And the other technical community that has been busy with this was uh, the programmers, the software developers. They created huge survey and came up with a lot of recommendations for companies, like how can you, ha how can you help your employees, especially if they're software developers, to deal better with the pandemic. But those um, tips can be useful also for other companies. And then um, from the community builder point of view, the safety is not only individual thing, it's a shared thing, it's a communal thing. The third layer is again like the need for belonging and the networking layer. So what's in common there is, is connection. But in order to create these connections, we have to realize that, that yeah, we need to be open and vulnerable at the same time, and then to create kind of boundaries and then share those boundaries with others. It's like super complex. The networking people know this and you can one-to-one -one use those concepts in the human communication. And so the social sciences researcher who was very much busy with that is Brené Brown. And uh, to all the techies, I also want to say that the social skills are um, not like soft skills. They are fundamental skills for doing our work. Uh, even if we are techies, we still have to talk to people. And so uh, adjacent community to this 
used to be open source and feelings. They don't have events anymore, but they they had conferences where they were talking about both open source and emotions and empathy and how can you use it as a superpower and so on. Um, so this is, yeah, about the layer three. Um, other communities that were very busy during uh, the pandemic with these topics were Mozilla, um, London Internet Exchange, FOSDEM was online, and they also dealt with these fundamental topics. Uh, Hope Conference, so it was wonderful to just be at home and actually be all around the world and not have to travel. As long as, uh, uh, at the same time, it was horrible to not be able to see friends in person. So yeah, it's it's very difficult to kind of foster the belonging when we can't be in the same space, but then we create larger communities which are global. And this layer is more about kind of slowing down. So one of the dangers of being connected all the time online um, for your work, online for your social connections, is a burnout. So uh, people will need to be connected with other people because they have this need for esteem. And we get that from our friends, from our colleagues, from our families. And during pandemic, we were not able to actually be with them. So we had to interact online. But that is also a job. <laughs> so. Uh, there is also a very important message that you should slow down and um, not only establish connections, but finish the connections, which is the meaning of this, like uh, sin ack and fin ack, uh, which happens on the layer four. And um, take it easy, relax, and avoid the burnout. So, a small meme intermezzo. Um, the, the, fifth, uh, the fifth layer used to be um, yeah, at the top of the pyramid, but actually that pyramid got extended. So now there are like seven layers, the same as on the um, OSI stack or CAT stack. And so the fifth, sixth, and the seven layers um, are actually corresponding to cognitive needs, aesthetic needs, and then the need for self-actualization. So how does that look in pictures? Well, the cognitive needs are um, yeah, uh, very, very strong in the technical community. The techies really want to uh, understand everything, get very deep into the topics, and are very proud of our cognition and how smart we are. And on the other hand, uh, the neurodiversity, whoops, um, is also a prevalent characteristic, or like there is a disproportionately many neurodivergent people in the technical communities. What does that even mean? Well, this woman actually described the concept in 89, and then it has been uh, promoted by other people in the meantime. And only now, with the younger generations, this is becoming like, uh, less of a stigma, and people are actually taking pride in being neurodivergent, uh, which is either being somewhere on the autism spectrum or ADHD or OCD, or like there are all kinds of names, and it's still not very well defined, and it's not um, equally treated all around the world. Holland is, is doing quite good with accepting people that are neurodivergent and finding ways to kind of incorporate them in the, in the society. And um, at the Shah conference in 2017, there was a beautiful talk about it. So technical communities have been aware of the neurodivergence among us. Layer six is the, um, what is that again? Well, um, on the Maslow uh, uh, pyramid, it's the uh, layer with the aesthetic needs. So we all need uh, to enjoy beauty, like that's part of being human. And um, with the hackers and techies, the beauty is something 
that we can also create using computers. So that's like a connection between, again, these more social um, sides and, and the uh, more technical sides. However, um, in order to preserve the beauty, we really have to kind of rein in our needs for more and more equipment, larger internet, more users, because while we are doing that, we are actually causing um, a lot of damage to nature and to the environment, and we are part of that. So it's, it's, uh, the lesson of this is moving away from the concept of the pyramid more to the concept of a circle, which is scary because the coronavirus is also kind of round, and um, this is the artistic representation of the, of the coronavirus. And so I have found a lot of um, uh, fulfillment for my needs for beauty and the connection with nature by having a lot of plants. So this is my like a uh, uh, lockdown hobby and also connecting with, with the cat. Um, and uh, during this whole thing, there was also a conference where Radia Perlman was uh, bringing up this point. So if you, how many of you have heard of her? So she, hates it when people call her that, but people do call her the mother of the internet because she was working on some very early protocols a uh, long time ago, like in IEEE and so on. And she's still active, mostly like, yeah, giving talks and, and being a role model. So she's been asking like, well, what is the internet doing for uh, our survival? Like, is this contributing to the survival of the planet? And uh, well, we still have to figure that out because it's nice to make these jokes like, yeah, yeah, the needs, uh, but under all the basic needs is actually Wi-Fi and battery. Um, well, it's not true. Underneath all of these needs, we need to have a planet on which to develop the networks further. And then we move to um, the, the seven layer, which is about the self-actualization, but uh, in this Western society and in specifically also mostly in the technical communities that I'm part of, people are quite unaware of our uh, privileged position and of the power differentials. And this is uh, like when it comes to self-actualization, it's not only about like being selfish, but it is about <clears throat> using our power and our privilege to help other people also be able to self-actualize. So the technical community that was uh, active on, in this area oh, is the digital rights community, and they also did like a very large survey and published a beautiful report about building stronger communities. And uh, another role model here is uh, Entertainer of the Year. Last year, Lizzo, a beautiful artist who is also struggling with mental health and is also trying to delete the stigma around it. So, we couldn't be just stopping at the seven layers. <laughs> so, on the top of the, of the OSI stack, there is also financial layer, political layer, and this t-shirt was actually um, very popular at some time and it was possible to buy at the ISC, uh, Internet Software Consortium, the, the original maintainers of BIND website, but it's not there anymore. And then that corresponds to the, uh, the other top layers that have been added to uh, the Maslow Pyramid, which are actually coming from the First Nations perspective, because these Native Americans were um, an inspiration for Maslow to create this whole pyramid, but then he kind of westernized it. And what they are saying is that on top, it's not self-actualization. It is actually community actualization. And on top of that is the cultural perpetuity and personal transcendence even. So, okay, let's get there. This is a very cool photo that I found on the internet. The person who came up with this, um, to add two more layers like financial and political is Evie Nemeth. And she was very active in the early days of NLUUG. So she wrote, okay, how many of you know about her? 
Ooh, many more. <laughs> cool. So yeah, she was here, basically. Uh, she's one of my heroes, but unfortunately she, yeah, she was uh, very adventurous and she was sailing around the world and then vanished. So that was a long time ago, probably she's dead. But uh, yeah, she disappeared in the sea. But before that, she wrote like books about sis system administration and so on. And here she is at the same logo as, uh, as I am, so I'm kind of proud. Um, okay, so financial layer and political layer. Now, uh, the, the, the old uh, way of looking at the financial layer was it's about money. Follow the money, it's about the economy, but that was a long time ago. Um, we don't have to follow this kind of pyramid uh, scheme of like a traditional economy because there's so many other alternative economic models, circular economy, donut economy, um, community sharing, gift economy. This is all at the same level as the finances. So it's not about like exchanging coins. It's, it's about contribution. So people have a need to actually be uh, rewarded for their work, but they also have a strong need for contribution. And, and this is what I find beautiful about the free software and open source communities, because you understand that it's not only about money. And so uh, what is it then about? So indeed, it's about the community actualization, giving to the community, belonging to the community, and together creating the value which then can contribute to the meeting the needs of others. And finally, uh, the layer nine, which again, in the traditional sense, is the political layer. So political decisions that shape uh, the, the performance of all the other layers, or it is about the overarching culture. So somehow in the West, the, the cultural perpetuity and the state and the politics is either the same or very much merged but it doesn't have to be understood that way. So there are examples where the society is seen less of a pyramid, more as a circle. Like we all belong into it, Ubuntu, but not as an operating system, but as a statement or as a philosophy. And, and so, yes, currently we live in capitalism, but it doesn't have to stay that way. And then as a role model, as my favorite politician, um, I've heard last time when I presented about this, that she's apparently not completely popular among everybody, but she's my favorite politician. And then the, the youth, the, the new generations, they don't want to take part in what they call politics. They are protesting, they are rebelling. And so this is also an invitation for you to, to join, the, join the new kids. They are really smart, they're beautiful. So, how am I doing? Okay. Um, we could have a small discussion now. Any questions? Anybody else wants to say something? No? Okay, so yeah, so it started with me looking into this, like okay, there's a stack, it's layers, there's a pyramid, things on top of each other, but actually I prefer now to look at it as, as a part of like circles, holons, um, the circles that actually are embedded within other circles. It is a kind of hierarchy, but it's more like natural hierarchy. And so there are three levels here, the personal, the interpersonal, and then the social, or like uh, systemic. And how to deal with, with all of them? Well, it's, it's not possible to, to solve systemic problems by making personal choices that are different. It's like, yeah, climate change, just take shorter showers or don't use plastic bags. There are structural problems. Of course, they're all impacting each other. But if the problems are structural, we also have to look for the structural solutions. One of them is working on this restorative systems, trans, uh, transforming uh, the society in a 
way that is not punitive and and to deal with conflicts in completely different ways. The other one is to, uh, well, at least in technical communities, we have been uh, uh, working a lot on inclusion, but we have to also work on diversity, equity, and justice. And now they have a cool new um, acronym for that. So probably my next presentation will be about JEDI. And then finally, the resilience seemed like a really nice word for me uh, six months ago when I started about this, like, yes, we need to be resilient, both on a personal and the community level. But in the meantime, I realized that that is too much to ask from people to just keep on being resilient without changing the conditions that make it so hard to actually live in this situation. So. It is important to be resilient, but it's also important to change the conditions which create uh, that situation that we are struggling with. So uh, here's one of the quotes. I don't want to be resilient anymore. I want to have it easy. I, I want to not have to take more and more hits. I want the system to change. And so uh, how can we do that? Well in any way that you like to take part in transforming those systems. And then when it comes to the interpersonal relations, if you are having more resources than somebody else, experience, knowledge, uh, wealth, you can offer to be a mentor to someone, you can sponsor somebody, uh, you can just listen to them. This is what other people need. And if you are in a situation that you have the needs that are not being met, please ask. Most, most of the time people are happy to listen to you, to be your mentor or to help you out. And, and so in that way, we strengthen the community and then we can work on um, transforming the system. And, and finally, uh, for yourself, well, take good self-care that's also part of resistance. Um, get in good trouble. If you see that there is some injustice happening, take part in changing it, call it out. And, and finally, and this might be really hard to hear, if you have been benefiting from being in a privileged position, admit that. And if you can, give back. And if you're still there, Remove yourself. It's really hard to hear, but sometimes we have to do it. So we are all part of the solution. We are also all part of the problem. And if we heal ourselves, we will contribute to healing the world. And if we put effort and energy in healing the world, that's going to contribute to our own healing. So that's how we get into these circles and cycles. And it's often hard to think that one person or our group can make a big difference, but we can. And so this is a, a quote again from a, a anthropologist Margaret Mead. It is always a small group of people that is changing the world. So if you're looking for more community and more resources, uh, the Community Health Village um, has a series of workshops that are going on right now. And uh, again, you can find them online or on our Diversity Task Force uh, mailing list. And um, that's almost the end of my talk. I do want to leave you with at least a picture of a lot of women because, well, there is uh, two of us <laughs> in this whole room. Uh, I'm used to it, but uh, I would really love to show you uh, or to show the audience of some young women that are watching this, there are role models. There are more women in there. They're brilliant. They are helpful. And they have helped to create both this tech industry and the economy and the politics. And um, yeah, uh, following their steps. 
this was my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so now we can have uh, questions. Yes? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say that was a wonderful talk. Thank you so much. I've never attended a lecture before with only female role models. So <laughs> thanks so much for that. I will change my next lectures after this. <laughs> no, but I also have a question, if I may, yeah? So how, how do you deal at RIPE with this? How, how do you actually bring this message aside from lecturing? How do you do that community building? How do you convey this message? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Well, it's a little bit uh, aside from like the main topic, which was supposed to be resilience, but I love to talk about diversity, inclusion, and so on. So today we actually published a new article about specifically diversity matters at our next RIPE meeting. So we started sometime, I don't know, five years ago, uh, looking into this. And since then, uh, we got like a lot of advice and made the plan, like what are we going to implement? And so we did part of that. And so we um, have uh, support for the people from marginalized groups to come and join our meetings when they were in person. So we have the fellowship program and uh, uh, academic program. This is uh, mostly like for young people or the people from not in Western Europe. Um, and, and like poor people, I mean, it's, it's hard to say this, but like, yeah, they need support. And also we need their contribution because our community is aging. Like we need to be replaced. And so, but yeah, we are very bad at PR, so we, we cannot reach them otherwise. And so we look for them and offer them support. Uh, they get the pa uh, paid travel uh, accommodation um, in order to take part in, in our meetings. And if they're academics, they also get an opportunity to actually present their work, which is very important for them to get the feedback. And it's important for us to hear the new, yeah, um, advancement in the in the academia and in technology so that that's one thing then for the gender um, diversity we had um, several of the women in tech women in tech lunches so that's how far we we go with that because there is quite some resistance from the point of view of meritocracy and openness and like there is this attitude but we are open so if if certain categories of participants do not join, that's their problem, yeah. not our problem. <laughs> and so it, we, we try to kind of deal with both of those sentiments because indeed that is what it takes to listen to the community. That's also part of our community. So we have to somehow go around that. And uh, we have provided the paid childcare at our conferences so that the people who are parents can uh, come and actually take part in the conferences. Um, so not only women, but, all, but men, like fathers and mothers. Um, we also have code of conduct. So we are trying to deal with, uh, well, the, the people who might not feel welcome in our community because of the cultural differences. And so code, code of conduct is part of that. Yeah, those were the, the practical things that we have been doing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and also, if you don't mind, also just this specific topic, because uh, I've worked with a lot of tech people uh, in my career. You know, I I think we know each other since uh, HIP 97, yeah. which I helped organize. So I'm used to that this is the most difficult topic to address, uh, I think, um, well-being, uh, mental well-being and, and coping with stress. How do you get this message across? How do you reach out to people that may well be borderline uh, autistic and not very uh, open to these suggestions about their mental well-being? Yeah, so uh, that that's a great uh, uh, observation that it is really hard. And 
And there have been like all these examples that I have been collecting. This is more like, you know, collecting receipts. It's, it's like not saying, oh, it's just me who thinks this is important. In a lot of communities, actually, it turns out that now is the right time to start bringing up these things because it's, we've been suffering long enough in silence. We better start talking about this. So all these examples that I, that I showed are from various communities. And so when I start kind of talking about it, then, um, yeah, people are happy, people are interested, I get invited to the next talk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that there is a, apparently interest, but it also takes, I guess, not giving a damn. <laughs> if, um, like, um, if people are not interested, well, there is a set another talk they can go to that one so yeah I, i'm old enough now to not care so that's 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 another like there has to be some advantages <laughs> of, of getting also this is one of them like oh, sure i'll talk about things that people are not comfortable listening about but thank you any more questions so yeah. I'm also curious about the NLUUG community. Like, how did you stay together throughout this year and a half? What was happening there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we held some virtual events uh, with only one speaker. Well, we had one speaker two times. We had one event with two speakers was the best event ever, <laughs> but the recording failed. It was very nice because it was about the development of the Corona Check app. The CEO of uh, the de health department, health Ministry of Health, was talking about that. And it was very, how do you call it, actual. Actual? Yeah, um, yeah. actual. It was... Oh ja, het was heel actueel op dat moment. Ja, ja, ja. En we hebben gewoon heel en, en het leuke was ook dat je dan ook vooraf en achteraf wandelgangen had. Ja. He, de, ik, 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 ik heb de telkens reclame voor gemaakt en gezegd van de deur gaat open om half acht en het praatje begint om half negen. Ja, heel goed. Om duidelijk te maken dat je ook vooraf al welkom bent. Ja, en, en hoe vaak had je die virtual Eens, events? Twee per maand ongeveer. Oh, wow. Ja, yeah. en dat werd, ja ik, 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 ik heb mij als virtual event enabler geadviseerd. Maar uh, er waren natuurlijk, we zitten in een programmacommissie die ook deze conferentie georganiseerd heeft. Maar ja, er werden telkens weer sprekers aangedragen. En dan moest je een beetje trekken af en toe om die sprekers zover te krijgen. Yeah. Sommigen moest je wat rustiger maken. Maar dat uh, was heel leuk om te doen. En heel leuk om mee te maken. Het werd vaak erg laat. <laughs> ik heb dat niet altijd meegemaakt. Ik zou het niet <laughs> weten. <laughs> Maar het was leuk. And we survived, yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. Next time I'm going to add your example in here. Yeah. I, I had an example of uh, NL NOG community. They had a coffee morning, but um, they stopped with it because people don't need it anymore or they have Zoom fatigue and they don't want to meet uh, online anymore. So, yeah, I took it out <laughs> because it doesn't exist anymore. But th that was also... A good, um, yeah, a good way to keep in touch and to keep the sense of community. As I look at my social groups, as I look at my groups, then I see that the problem actually now comes. Uh, emailtjes that you get uh, at the request of a conference or so, or uh, uh, volleyball, people who are anxious. It is now actually much problematic than it was 10 years ago, when it was all closed. Oh, wat, wat vind je dan meer problematisch? Wat, ik... en mensen zijn, een, een deel van de mensen blijft heel erg gespannen. En uh, dat, 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 dan krijg je dus best wel rare mailtjes of uh, apart gedrag. O, omdat zijn ze bang om te komen naar de event dat uh, in person is? Uh, ja, of keren zich tegen de overheid of dat soort uh, spanningen, afgeleide ja, ja. spanningen. Dus, uh, ja, nou dan volgende keer gaan we een nieuwe presentatie doen over wat uh, is in de tussentijd gebeurd. Ja, yeah. yeah, it it's not over. Oké. Okay. Any more questions? Ja? Yeah? Ja? Yeah. 
Een ander ervaringsfeit. Oké. Okay. Een ander ervaringsfeit. Ik zit veel uh, eigen adviescommissies en eigen in zelf. Bekwaardig is de eigen meetings gingen gewoon door, de virt- maar allemaal virtueel. En dat is eigenlijk wel redelijk gegaan. Hoewel de laatste werd eigenlijk minder, want iedereen de Zoom vette kiet sloeg ontzettend toe. En, uh, maar de security committee, een van de dingen waar ik in zit, die hadden een paar uh, social events uh, gewoon voorkomen, zelf georganiseerd. Eentje ervan was dat iemand had zijn plaatselijke zanger uit de plaatselijke kroeg uitgenodigd en gewoon een uur neergezet en gezegd dat iedereen maar met de bier achter de zoel moest gaan zitten. <lacht> en uh, er waren een aantal van die events en dat was eigenlijk wel volkomen spontaan en ongeorganiseerd. En dat uh, was bijzonder aardig. En, uh, uh, ja. De grote dingen, dat gaat slecht. Dat gaat eigenlijk gaat niet zo best. Hoewel, het was interessant om te zien dat de planner in de eigen had 700 mensen tegelijk ontzoomen. En dus dat schijnt gewoon te werken. En, uh, maar v- verder, wat je mist, zijn de wandelgangen. Uh, al, ik, ik heb geloof tien Zoom-meetings per week. Of, en, en, en het is allemaal tamelijk officieel. Er worden de, de hoeveelheden grappen die gaan, lopen terug. En gewoon even iemand op, op de wc aanschieten van wat bedoel je nou eigenlijk, dat is er niet meer bij. En dus de misverstanden uh, lopen op in het gewone werk. Dat is mijn ervaring. Ja, Dankjewel. helemaal mee eens. Spontaniteit is een beetje moeilijk uh, ding. Hè? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. One more and then uh, yeah. we stop and have yeah. beer. It's a good idea. Yeah, even bedwingen of ik me in het Engels zal doen. Ik uh, kijk dan naar mijn dochter. Die uh, zit op school en die is, heeft natuurlijk ook heel veel tijd thuis gezeten. Uh, en ik heb op een gegeven moment tegen haar gezegd, nou volgens mij red jij het wel goed. Uh, toen zei ze, nou dat valt wel tegen. Uh, maar wat ik daar eigenlijk over wou zeggen is dat ik zag dat er een soort backchannel is. Een soort ander niveau daarachter. En dat is dat groepje meisjes waar ze veel mee optrekt. Uh, die via WhatsApp ze ontzettend veel uitwisselen. En ik denk dat het ook misschien een beetje is. dat We hebben dan hier wel events. Maar dat er wandelgangen ding van wat dan voor mijn dochter WhatsApp is. Waar je mij nooit op zult aantreffen. Uh, dat we dat, uh, dat we misschien eraan zouden moeten denken om zoiets in te zetten. En dan liever Signal natuurlijk dan WhatsApp. Ja. <laughs> nou, okay. thank you. Ja, dankjewel. Uh, well, I'd like to invite you um, to come uh, to the right meeting. We are going to have both uh, the, the main conference, not on Zoom, because that's not inclusive enough. We use Meet Echo uh, platform, which is more like open source. And then we will also have something else for the social events, probably proprietary, uh, but fun. Um, I, I have heard that the RIPE organizes very fun meetings. So if you're looking for fun, you can come to us. If you're looking for content, you can also come to us. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see you there. Okay, thank you, Vesna. <laughs> And... Oh yes, <yeah>, Ropafels. <laughs> Stroopwafels. Stroopwafels, thank you. Thank you.